Hello, my Wealthy Wife tribe. How are you? This is Ms. Sophia, founder of Wealthy Wife. Before I get started, I want to share this with you because this this is so me. So let me, let me, give me one second. I'm waiting for it to run so I can start it. Here we go. Do I curse? Heavens to Betsy, no. I do speak fluent trucker, though, with a sailor dialect and a construction accent. So do with that as you will. <laughs> now, what she's saying is, darling, do I cuss heavens to Betsy? No. I do speak fluent trucker, so with a sailor dialect, and a construction accent. So, do with it as you will. And this is coming from, I finally figured out, and by the way, thank you for being here, darlings. I do appreciate you joining me today. But... <clears throat> And for my old school OG subscribers and my actual Wealthy Wife Goddaughters, you already know. When it comes to technology, um, yeah, not one of my strong points at times. And I just recently discovered that I guess there's a spot you can click and go back and actually read additional comments on different videos. So I was scrolling through last night, catching up on some of the comments that have been shared over the course of years, literally years. And... Wonderful comments. For those of you who have left them, I appreciate it. I love the fact that you find value in the information that I share with you. I noticed some very interesting debates happening. But what I think I love so much about the audience that I have here on YouTube, because I have it within the space of Wealthy Wife, but I love, one, how respectful you ladies are, and a periodic gentleman that will comment. And for the ones that once in a blue moon, and I mean, it's very, very rare that want to come in and say something sideways, you ladies will check them in a heartbeat. And I appreciate it because once again, there's no reason to be disrespectful or to be talking all sideways out your neck. There's just none. So thank you. I do have a very, very amazing uh, bunch of men and women who follow me here on YouTube. So thank you. But one of the comments that made me, that made me smile was, because I, I remember this one, it was done a few years ago. We know I have spicy language. I definitely speak trucker at times. What is it? I, how does she put it? I speak fluent trucker and with a sailor dialect with, you know, a construction accent. We do know I use spicy language periodically in my YouTube videos. I love words. And I love all words. I love language and speaking and, you know, creating... Um, these stories and these 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 visions for you with my words. So I will never apologize for the wording that I use because I am very conscious of what I'm saying when in my whys. So for those that get a little faint hearted when I use a word that may not be, oh my God, thoroughly socially acceptable, you're going to be okay. Because the thing is this, listen to what I'm sharing. The delivery sometimes is done to shock you because I, I know what I'm doing. I'm a wordsmith. When it comes to words, even though I do create my own some days, when it comes to, which is necessary sometimes, I know what I'm doing. I'm a very deliberate person. Don't you ever think I'm not? But anyway, so in the course of the comments, I was laughing. So under this comment, someone had actually wrote, and I've got to read this because whoever posted this, it's been years. I want to say thank you because I smiled. She said this, if an angel would cuss, she'd sound like Sophia. Wow. What a voice. One more time. If an angel would cuss, she'd sound like Sophia. Wow. What a voice. So whoever, I don't even know if that person even still follows me, but if whoever wrote that, thank you. Because I got news for you. If angels could cuss, mm-hmm. And I'm sure they do. I'm sure there are days they'd like to cuss people out. Especially since technically based upon what's written in the Bible that we were, we were created as a, as a higher form of whatever than them. And humans are messy. <laughs> so anyway, thank you. But today our topic is, and here's where the topic comes from. One of my goddaughters sent me um, a link to a YouTube video with a gentleman who was discussing his psychologist, you know, talking about men and relationships. And it was, he was discussing why men, why basically successful men, you know, use the services of escorts. I know exactly why they do it. And trust me, it's, the reasons are valid. They really, really are at times. So once I listened to that video and he basically said the stuff I've been sharing, I've known about for years. I was like, okay, cool. He gets it. 
But then it comes down to, he kept always bringing this up. There are three things women should do if she wants to really, you know, here's how you want to win a man over. Any man of your, any man that you have access to, you can get him if you do these three things. The first thing was, what was the first thing he said? I forget the first thing. I know the third thing was, don't be disrespectful. Whatever you do, just do not disrespect the man. Find ways to communicate your thoughts without having to be disrespectful with your words, your body language, your rolling of the eyes, whatever, which I agree. I agree because you have to get to that point that now you're just out of control in reference to your body responses to him. Something went, aw something went astray long before that conversation because we can have conversation, have disagreements with men and others without it becoming just a whole battlefield for no reason. But the, the second one, I forget the first one, doggone it. Anyway, but the second one he kept saying was, you got to, you know, give him sex. You know, be the sluttiest, whatever version of you. Sex, 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 sex. Especially if you want a successful, high-value man. You know, because men think about sex all the time. They may think about it all the time because as women, we think about it all the time. If we're honest, we think about it. Think about it. You see a gorgeous, sexy man, what did our brain go? Mm. We are we are far from exempt from the fact that mm, I wonder what he's packing. I wonder he'd be like if we did ABC. We think about it too. We just disguise our feelings better and our our thought process because we our physical reaction is not as visible as a man's. Okay, so we hide it better. But I was laughing because he kept putting this out there. You have to do this. And, you know, for those of you, he had to say, you do all the right things for all the wrong men where women are sleeping with men too soon because they like me, sexy, the bad boy, whatever. And he's saying that instead of doing that for a man that you guys feel is high value and, you know, you want to be part of his work. Oh, be be purposeful. Have Here was the first one. Make sure you are actually adding to this man's life. I agree with him on that. I'll get back to that later because I've mentioned to it in different audios and videos. But the whole thing about you have to give a man sex. Instead of wait, making a man wait because he was saying, some of you, you know, you've got these rules, especially if you're older. And I don't know why they want to come for those of us that are older. The fact that we have to give up our bodies so soon just because, you know, we're older. Kiss my sweet brown behind, okay? I know for a fact we don't have to do all that. And I'm explaining to you why. And he was saying, you know, never, you know, just, just I was laughing because I thought this is untrue. This is untrue. You need not lay yourself out for a man and give him up the, that part of you that is sacred before you are ready. Now, before I say this, because some of you are going to think, ah, oh, no, you have to have something valuable to offer him. It need not be your body initially. Because while he's saying, go out here and give him the nastiest version of sex you could think of, and da, no. Because here's the kicker, because he was saying, you got to be able to fill this man's need so he will not leave your household to find it elsewhere. Honey, you could be, there are plenty of women out there that have done everything. They've been helpful in a man's life. They've, they've they found ways to, you know, integrate themselves in his life in a way that she should be technically irreplaceable because she's doing so much for him to make his life easier. She's doing so many things. You know, she's grinding it out and making things easier for him. And, you know, she should be irreplaceable. She has the reverse cowgirl. She's like, she makes a porn star, which, by the way, porn isn't real. When you, a clip of porn that is being shared. Now hear me, I'm not one who watches porn, but I know this because of I used to sell sex toys and a variety of things. I had a whole business built around that. So I've done my research. It takes them hours, hours to gather enough material that they can slice and dice and edit into ever whatever pornography legit not not home videos and stuff like that though whatever is out there there's all kind of stuff on the internet i guess people can watch but i'm saying legit a legit pornography business it takes hours to get those to get those little movies put together for you it's not something that you know sh you know she's doing this for like 45 minutes straight no hours but you know you, you're you know you're watching and you've learned every single trick and you can you know double over backwards and you know oh my god it's just ridiculous and you don't argue with him. You're respectful. You're not rolling your eyes. Oh my God. You can do all that stuff. All of it. And not keep a man if he has no desire to stay. Not going to help you. Not. So when I hear men saying this, it makes me literally laugh out loud. And coming from the position of an older woman, 
when they talk about the fact that we need to give it up quicker because no man's going to wait. Some people want to make a man wait three days before she has sex with him. Honey, I've had men wait months. Because, and I said before, I am up front from the get-go. We're not doing this because I need to get to know you. I am out here looking to make some new friends, some new acquaintanceships. If romance happens, that's fabulous. I'm open to romance, absolutely. But I also know the energy. I know, I know what I bring into a man's life. And zero arrogance. I have track records to back up what I'm saying. That comes from the men that are my friendships, the men that are my acquaintanceships. Now imagine if a man is actually intimately attached to me. I know who I am. So I understand that I don't have to worry about, do I need to give up the vagina right away? I don't. And they know they're not going to get that right away anyway. Because here's, and I gave you, I shared this with you guys a few audios ago, how I dismantle that. Because he was basically saying, if you don't, he's going to go elsewhere to find it. Good. Good. That means you can go ahead and get your not get your rocks off, do what you got to do. And so we get back together and have conversation. You can focus. You can focus on getting to know me. I can focus on getting to know you and whoever you're laying with. Y'all have a good time. Because while she's doing all this thinking that she's going to be able to captivate you and hold your attention and keep you with her. I already know you're not staying with her because one, she's part of the only one you're laying down with. And all that time you're doing all that with all of them and they think they're going to be able to hold you down and convince you and show you that she is the one. Honey, I already know you're looking at me that I'm your, I'm the one. I have not received all the proposals I've received from not just successful men. I already told you guys. These men brought me estates. Estates. That's what they were offering. Not just a house in the suburbs. Not just a G-Wagon, okay? Yeah, I'm going to pick on that stuff right now. Not just the basic stuff that people think makes them look successful. I'm not knocking stuff. I said before, I love stuff. I love, I love, love, love stuff. My preference just happens to be different. I have different things I love that I that, that actually make my eyes light up. And trust me, the G-Wagon isn't doing it. I don't understand the excitement of that doggone vehicle. I think they're ugly, ugly, ugly. I'm not into ugly cars, just so you know. And I love, and we know I love cars. So I've made that abundantly clear. I love cars, but I like sexy cars. And even, I even, some of the SUV, if I'm going to buy SUV, it needs to be sexy. It needs to be sexy. A G-Wagon is not sexy. And from the sound of it, they're not comfortable either. So, no thank you. But anyway. So, they, mm -mm. no, 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 no. When a man presents himself to me, And they're serious. And they're serious. Trust me, they're serious. They're bringing me estates. I shared the story of the gentleman who was literally attempting to sell himself to me in reference to why I should spend time with him and get to know him right after my father passed. For those who haven't heard the story, allow me to share. I'm going to Starbucks to meet one of my sisters because of final arrangements for my father I needed a witness to sign some paperwork so she was going to come and be the witness for the paperwork so as I'm standing in line waiting for him to come I'm waiting at Starbucks, standing there waiting to order my coffee I'm distraught because my father had literally passed away just a couple of days before so I'm just gone mentally gone just gone and I'm standing in line and this good looking older gentleman comes back behind me and he looks at me he smiles I smile back and he's like hi my hi and he's, you know, he's just looking at me like, mm. and I'm looking at him like, because I'm not thinking about anything. I'm like, I'm hardcore in the grieving. I'm freshly in a state of grieving, grieving, right? And he asked my name. I told him my name. My name is Sophia. He goes, I'm going, and you are? Because I'll, I'll, I'll still be civil. Why not? I'm standing here waiting to order my coffee. And he says, they call me sugar. I'm like, oh, that's nice sugar. Oh, sugar. <laughs> that's cute. That's funny, huh? And I'm not getting it, right? He finally looks at me. He says, uh, sugar daddy. I'm like, I go, oh, not registering. Okay, it's not registering in my brain. And then finally, he stops me. And I turn around. He looks at me. He goes, they call me sugar daddy. I said, Oh, I said, oh, I go, <laughs> I go, that's funny. That's cute. I go, that's funny. He's like, yeah. And I still wasn't getting it because he was trying to find a way to offer what he had offered to me, right? He finally says, listen, 
I'd ordered my stuff. He ordered his. He paid for our stuff. And he says, listen. And I eventually told him, I go, you know, my father, I got just, I got to apologize. I got really, I'm not really like he, he right now. I go, my father just passed away. I go, I'm just here to really sign some documents, you know, for his final arrangements. And he says, I really am sorry to hear about your dad. He goes, I really, really am. I go, this is terrible. He goes, but let me say this to you. He goes, you're beautiful. He goes, you're beautiful. He goes, you smell amazing. He goes, and you're, he goes, and you just, he goes, you're so classy. He goes, allow me to be your he goes, well, I could never replace your father and your dad. He goes, allow me to be, quote, unquote, your daddy. He goes, allow me to take care of you. Allow me to care for you. He goes, if you allow me to do this for you, here's what I have to offer you. And this man went down a list. This is literally me standing in Starbucks. I am not looking for anyone. I'm not looking to attract anyone. I'm just being me. And this man sat there and he goes, I didn't know. He goes, and here's the deal. He goes, I respect your grieving process. He goes, but I need you to understand. He goes, I'm here for you. He goes, allow me to get to know you. He goes, allow me to assist you. He goes, and he, and he had, and just what he rattled off that he had offered, it was, I'm not going to go through all the details, but it was, it was substantial properties and this and that. This was a conversation in line at Starbucks. Okay. So, and this is one of many conversations I've had with men, men have had with me, should I say, that I've been a participant, a rather surprise participant, because these conversations come out of nowhere. It is my presence. It is the energy I exude. There's no conversation of sex. There's no, oh, you know, as soon as we get together, I want to lay down with you and I'm going to do... No, no, no. Do they desire it? Of course. If I would say, yeah, they would not say no. But they already know when they approach me, you need to, you need to be bringing... What are you offering me? What, what? Why should I tie my energy into your energy? Explain to me. I'm all ears. I'm listening. What are you offering? And it's not that I asked them. They're, they're telling me. They're literally explaining to me the benefits of me saying yes to their offer. It is never me looking at a man saying, hey, I need you to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G for me. Or I expect you to do da, 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 da for me. Mm -mm. I've never had to do that in all my life. Now, some of you are probably thinking, now she's lying. No, no, I'm not. I am not. I have no, I have no reason to. I have no reason to. I've said before, I never worry about having a man in my life or men in my life because I understand my energy. I understand. I And they pick up on it. It is for the conversations that I have with them. It is the energy that I am in when I am with them. It is the. It is what my presence actually brings up in them. The energy that I exude, the woman that I am and beyond, literally highlights Within them, the desire to be bigger, better, and more. They come to find ways to be of service to me. And in no way, no way is it meant, will it diminish them. They understand and be in service to me, offering me, elevating me, is automatically going to make them even more prosperous. Because they have someone that they want, admire, adore, and they have this this. this Deep desire to cherish, the pamper, the spoil, whatever. You guys want princess treatment? I'm beyond princess. I we already know that. Like I said, they bring me estates. What are your men offering you? Hmm. I'll wait. Stop putting men on pedestals. That is today's topic. Stop putting them on pedestals. Now you have to be worthy. And I mean that you have to be, if you want to be able to come into presence with a man, especially these men that you guys call high value men, because that man was right. They have options. They have tons and tons of options. And I think that's great. I'm not, I'm laughing because I'm serious. I think that's great. Please go play with your options because when you're done playing with her and she's going to aggravate the life out of you, I already know you. I know where you, I already know you're coming back. And when you come back to me, you're going to be sitting there like, um, and I'm just going to wait. 
They hear you to hear your con to hear your confession. I say it again. I'm different. I know. I know. I cultivate me. So I keep telling you guys, learn who you are. I cultivate the energy and essence of who I am. I love being me for many, many reasons. I love the interactions I have with men. I love the interactions I enjoy with the women that I am part of my life. With their wealthy wife, my closest friendships. I am a very blissed woman. Meaning, I have, I am grateful for my life. But I'm a very much an active participant in the decisions I make and who I allow to be in my space. I practice discernment. I am intentional. That is one of the reasons why the men that, that come to me offering me estates enjoy my company so much. They already know that they already know they have to be bringing something to me. They don't they don't question it. They're not fussing about it. They're not complaining about it. They already know. Don't even open your mouth. You want to, really? Okay. Because of how I vibrate energetically. And it's just because I am. I am. I am me. I understand how to articulate my desires. I understand how to articulate my pleasures. I understand how to articulate my joy. That adds to theirs. And that gentleman, he was a good looking, good looking older man. I mean, seriously, good body wise. I mean, just smell amazing. Oh my God, he just smell really good. Attractive, attractive individual. So once again, for those that want to also discuss the fact, as always, I laugh and they want to pick up older women. Um, I say it again: not every man is looking for a young woman. Younger men are looking for young women, absolutely. A handful of older ones, absolutely. But I sit in a sweet spot. I'll say it again: I'm in a sweet spot. The younger ones chase after me. What's I'm like going? What are you doing? The sweet, but no, you, you're not even, not even remotely ready for me. My age group, for sure. Older, absolutely. I sit in such a sweet spot. I have so many options. Because I'm not worried about oh, what are other people are going to think about it. I don't care. I don't care. They're not paying my bills. They don't add value to my life. Their opinions add nothing to my life. So I have no, no concern about them. My concern is making sure that I stay energetically in a space where I can invite in the energy that actually is matching mine and has the potential to even bring more, to bring me higher, and that I also am elevating them higher. I am always about reciprocity. If you get nothing else but what I share here at Wealthy Wife, it is always about reciprocity. It's not just about what they can offer me and I can take from them. No, why would I do that? I would deplete them and they, couldn't, and they, wouldn't be able to, they would be unable to produce more. But when it cycles through me, you pour into me. I am a vessel. I am the Holy Grail. I am a woman. I am divine feminine energy. I am the Holy Grail. Pour into me. Make sure that my, and this is something you have to do as a woman. You make sure of this as well. No one is depleting my energy. No one, my cup isn't drying out. Basically, I'm not running on fumes or as my one client said years ago, I feel like I'm giving blood because I have nothing left to give. No, oh, no, no. So it is to continue as I'm doing things to fill my vessel because you're responsible for your vessel too. You have to take care of her because when you're caring for her, you understand how to express to others to care for you. We teach other people how to treat us. It is through what you say. It is also through what you don't say. It is how you carry yourself. It is how, you, what energy do you exude? When people are around you, how do they feel around you? Do they feel energized? Do they feel elevated? Are they curious? Do they desire to know more about you? I was laughing. I was sharing in class how, when I told you I, go to my, I would go to my Starbucks. That place was so much fun. I'm looking forward to getting back to Florida just so I can go hang out there again, which I'll be doing probably this coming winter. Um, but I mean, women, especially some of the women, because the women watched the men. The men were just, like I said, coming and going and coming and going and talking, da, 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 animated around me, doing things for me. This women just would be watching this, right? Just watching. <laughs> talking amongst themselves. And then eventually they'd walk up on me. And they'd be angry. I mean, that angry walk up on me. But who are you? 
I'm like, excuse me? I, who are you? Because you and your attitude need to step back up because you're a little too close to me. Back up. You know, I just need to know who you are. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Why are you worrying about it? But I'm just saying, no, you're saying nothing right now because you're just walking up on me all crazy. So what is on your mind? Speak. Who am I? No one. Just me. Oh, you have to be somebody important. You know, the way they would discuss, you know, how they still these things happen. I'm like, no, I'm just me. I'm literally just me. But have a wonderful day. And they wouldn't know what to do. Because, I, once again, I, I go ask the guys. If you're curious about who I am, you want to know, ask them. There, there they all sit. Ask them. If you're curious as to why they're always so gracious and so helpful and so loving and so animated around me, ask them. Go talk to them. Don't, don't come over walking up on me like you lost your mind. Go talk to them. Let each one of them tell you what it is about me that that excites them and it, it just elevates them and energizes them. Ask them. Because I, like I said, I'm, I literally am being honest with you guys. I just do me. Beautifully. Fabulously. Do me. And this is where I'm working on getting you. The goddaughters are working on it, and I love their progress. I do. For those of you that are still sitting there on the sidelines, wait. I don't know what you're waiting for. I really don't. But once again, that really is not for me. It's, that is really none of my business. None of my business. You will come join us and begin your process and elevation as well, or you will miss the train. Because the wealthy wife, the train, the tribe, the train is actually. Should, we have started the engines. Because I am working on a whole nother stratosphere for wealthy wife as we speak there are some things i was guided to do a couple years ago that i was not ready to do uh i'm now more ready more energetically ready to do them because some of them are they're really 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 big and it has required a level of learning of some information that i needed to learn that has taken me a couple years to, to it's still taking time to learn because it's so intense but when i say we are we are the ones who, once again, set the laws. We are the ones who set the guidelines. That is the energy of feminine. And men are the enforcers. They are the ones that are here to follow our guidance. But it's wise woman guidance. Not just, well, you need to say what I did. You need to do what I said. No, that's not, no, ladies. Because some of you tried it with your men. Well, you just needed to, see, you should have done what I said. No, he didn't have a reason to do what you said because you have never offered anything of value to him that didn't involve some extra aggravation for him. There is a way to speak to men that will get them to hear your wisdom. And it's not by telling him what he needs to do. Well, you should do it this way. No. There are ways to speak to men to get them to do exactly what you desire them to do. And they will happily do it. Because they, these, especially now, we're in different times. The transformation is very real. And it is coming back to the point of where women are in that space of, hold that space of power again. We are the energy that builds communities. The masculine, look around you. It has been out of control for, for, for eons. It's destructive because it's out of balance. Women have been sitting there going, oh, you know, whatever you say, ooh, ooh. All scary and scared. No, me wrong. I told you before. We have been, it has been, we have been crucified for real. I get it. I've been there, done it. I know it. Those days are done. We are now reestablishing the flow the way it's supposed to be done. Because the new, the new world is a real thing. And it has to be to the point that we're back to honoring and respecting the energy of the feminine Loving the masculine as well. But once again, the feminine energy is back in her proper place. And that is elevated above the masculine. Basically because we are the portals that bring in life. I don't care what they try to do artificially to bring about life. It's not the same as organic life. We are the portals that spirit enters into the vessel that is created within us to walk this planet. It is different. We create, we are the portals for organic life. The masculine is here to protect that. Because they also require us, they need us to be here. Because we're their entrance too. They don't get here without us. So when you finally understand who you are, 
And stop playing these silly games with yourself. And quit allowing yourself to be played by men. Good Lord. Stop putting these men on pedestals. Honor them. Love them. But learn who you are first so you understand who you're attracting into your world and who not to allow into your world. Because if you listen to the advice of this man, you guys are going to let you let these men plug into you all over the place that have no intention of staying with you. Do it already. Too many of you do it already. Allow these men to plug into you and stay too long. Trying to show him and convince him that you're worthy of him. No, baby girl. He needs to show you he's worthy of you. But you need to be a woman who truly is worthy. Not just because you got a vagina, okay? It takes more than that. Or because you're cute. No, it doesn't do that. There's more. It goes way deeper. Way, 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 way deeper. So, I had to share that. Because I thought that was so comical. Because he is so convinced that he's correct. And I'm like going... Maybe for the average woman, that's that's the case. But I have not. It's never been my story, and it's never going to be my story. It's never going to be my truth. Men, like I said, they come to me showing me how they can add value to my life because they already know. They know that in adding value to my life, it's automatically going to elevate them because of who I am, and zero arrogance. It's my energy. It's the essence that I am. What is that statement? I am that I am. That's it, babes. I am that I am. And I would love more of you to come join me on this journey. So anyway, I had to share that. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.